What's up guys, this is Andy here with Ultima I Device Vids. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys 10 brand new jailbreak tweaks for iOS 9.3.3. And, you know, these are not old updated tweaks or anything like that. These are brand new tweaks, you know, that have just been released for 9.3.3. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Rezero 9 is available for free, and it essentially shrinks down your notification banners to the size of the status bar itself. Nor normally, they actually drop down a little bit further. So I'm just going to go ahead and send myself a message here, and I'll show you what I mean. As you can see right there, it just shrinks it down right there. And it's not going to obtrude anything you're doing, as you can see, you know, nothing blocked and it's right in the status bar and it's fully readable as well. This is very useful if you're inside an app on your device and you receive a notification, you know, it's not going to interrupt anything that you're doing, but again, it's still fully readable and of course you could tap on it as well to go to the notifications. So highly recommended tweak. K9 is available for $1.49 and it's a new mini player music tweak for your device. So as you can see right here, it's essentially just a little window that floats around. And there's, and there's other tweaks that do this, but this provides some cool new options. Um, and there's some cool theming options and some other 3D touch stuff if you have a 6S as well. So essentially, if you just go ahead and double tap on the interface, as you can see there, as you can see, it's actually just going to change themes like that. There's a white one, a kind of a grayish one. And then there's a translucent one as well, and of course a dark night mode theme. And of course you have all your play, pause, skip controls, all the basic stuff that we're used to, which is really nice. Um, so just cool stuff like that. And if you tap and hold on this interface, it's just going to go ahead and open up the Now Playing app, just like that. And you can actually 3D touch on the album artwork if you have a 6S or 6S Plus. You'll get some haptic feedback, then it'll bring up a kind of an enlarged view like this. And it's a little bit hard to grab, but you could actually move it around like this. And you could just tap to make it go back to normal, like that, up in the corner there. And of course, you could dock it off to the side like that. It'll stick to the side of the screen, which is really cool. And if you guys head over to settings, there's some options to configure for this one as well. So you could really customize it to your liking in here. There's gesture configuration up here. Um, and then there's some color configuration. Then you have various visual things, for example, circle artwork, you know, hide on lock screen. If you don't want to, you know, the entire tweak to show up on the lock screen, uh, you could hide the volume, hide the time, just, you know, all kinds of cool in-depth customization stuff you could do inside the settings for the tweak. And just make sure you respring after you've finished, you know, changing everything. But really cool tweak. I just enjoy, you know, having that mini player on iOS, you know, whenever I want to pull it up. And also one more thing about Canite, essentially you could go ahead and open up Activator on your device and you could set a gesture to and to hide and show the MIDI player. So I'm just going to choose triple press the home button. You could go ahead and assign the tweak in here. And now when I go ahead and triple press my home button here, I'll show you. As you can see, the tweak will completely hide. I could re-enable it that way as well. So that's a cool way to toggle it on and off. So next up, we have 3D App Lock. This one's available for $1.49, and it allows you to lock applications on your device using the 3D Touch menu, and then essentially once the application is locked, you could authenticate to open up the application with Touch ID or a passcode if you want to do that. So whenever you go ahead and 3D Touch on an app on your device, as you can see here, you're going to be getting a new lock app button along with any other options that might be there. And, you know, it looks very native. It looks like it belongs there. And also, even for applications that don't have 3D Touch shortcuts by default, as you can see, it's actually just going to add the lock app button for that. So basically, every application will now have 3D Touch support with this tweak. So basically, if you guys want to lock up an app, just go ahead and tap lock app, and then it's done. So essentially, if I 3D Touch again, as you can see there, it's now going to give me the option to unlock the app. And if I go ahead and tap on it, as you can see, it's actually going to make me scan with Touch ID. But I don't have Touch ID enabled, so it's giving me an error message. But you also have the option, you know, to basically enter a passcode. You could click that, and then you could put in the passcode as well. So yeah, it's just a really cool way to, you know, secure applications easily. And again, you could unlock it just as easily just by selecting unlock app. So just easy way to lock and unlock apps when you need to. So if you guys head over to settings, you could go ahead and scroll down to 3D app lock. Uh, in here, you could enable or disable the tweak, and you could unlock all apps if you want to. So you could just scan your finger once to unlock all the apps. There's also the subtitle as well, which um, I do have enabled. It essentially will say remove app unlock, or if it's not locked, it'll say lock app with touch ID right there. Um, and then you could also always show the passcode button. So basically, you could have it so it'll always you know give you the option to add a passcode. You know, just in case you don't want to use Touch ID, then you can also change your passcode here. And yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up this tweak. Once again, it's called a 3D App Lock. Just looks very native. Looks like it belongs there. So super cool tweak. And just to let you guys know, you guys will need a Touch ID device to use this tweak. Even though there is the passcode option, Touch ID still needs to be enabled. However, you do not need a 3D Touch device. You could still, you know, use a tweak like Reveal Menu to enable the 3D Touch shortcuts and then use this tweak. But again, you will need a Touch ID device with Touch ID enabled to use this tweak properly. 
Next, we have Legacy Status Bar iOS 9. This essentially will bring back the old status bar from iOS 6 and below to iOS 9. And it's essentially more solid color, you know, just a little bit thicker, less translucent. And also, if you guys open up settings and find the Legacy Status Bar option, uh, there's, of course, you have the ability to enable or disable the tweak. But there's also some other random options that allow you to hide different things in the status bar. Uh, for example, carrier, airplane mode, Bluetooth, you know, logo, low location services, rotation log, VPN, and airplay. So just some random mis miscellaneous options in case you want to do that. Then you can apply changes and respring the device. So if you guys are feeling nostalgic, this is something you should try. Anna Launch is available for $1.49 and it allows you to add different animations to your home screen icons when you do different things on your device. So as you can see here when I launch an application it's going to go ahead and do a little animation there like that. So it just adds a cool touch to your device and you also may have noticed it earlier when I was talking about other tweaks as well. Uh, essentially you could go into settings and you know go into Anna Launch and this is how you set it up essentially to your liking. Just go into animations and then you know you'll see global animation up at the top. This is where you basically configure which animation you want. There's various to choose from in here. Uh, let's just try out a couple different ones. Let's try out Mac OS Dock Bounce. So <laughs> that's a cool little effect there. That, I'm sure that looks cool with the dock applications because it looks very authentic. So that's pretty cool there. Let's just go back to settings here. And again, there's various other ones you could configure. Let's just try Wiggle. That sounds fun. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but anyways, there's also speed here. You can make it longer if you want to or shorter. I'm personally going to keep it shorter because I don't, I don't want to have to wait that long whenever I want to open up an app. And then there's per app animations. This basically allows you to, to, to assign a specific app to have a specific animation different than all the other apps. So you go into app and choose the app. I have it set to the app store right now, but you could choose any app on your device. And then you have the animation you could choose for that. Let's just try the um, Mac OS dock bounce for just the app store. And then everything else is set to wiggle. Then you have the speed for the per app one here as well. So now, as you can see here, when I open up the settings app, it's still going to be that little wiggly animation, but the app store is going to be a different one. So again, that's that cool per app feature. So let's just head back to settings here. You could also clear the per app animations as well if you want to do that. Then we have various other options that pertain to different things you do on your device. You can animate when you close an app like this. So just like that. You could also animate on touch, which essentially just makes it so whenever you even touch the application, even if you don't open it, it'll animate. Then you could animate when you shake your device. This is actually pretty cool. So literally when you shake your device, your icons will become loose. That's just kind of a cool little feature there. As you can see, it'll of course just animate whichever one you have set. Then you have animate on swipe, and that's when you swipe between home screen pages like this, as you can see things will wiggle so <laughs> that's cool and of course if you have any per app one set that'll, that'll do the different animation there then you have animate on rotate so if you have an ipad or an iphone 6 plus or 6s plus uh, it'll go ahead and do this when you rotate like that so that's pretty cool as well so cool tweaker for or cool tweak i, I just said tweaker that's a combination of tweak and feature <laughs> cool tweaks you know for adding cool animation features to your device Snakebite 2 is available for $1.50, and it's a really cool 3D touch app switcher replacement for the iPhone 6S, and it also works on other devices as well. So basically, on the iPhone 6S, you 3D touch on the left side of the screen like you always do, and it gives you the new tweak, the, you know, the new interface. If you have an older device, you just double tap and swipe, then it'll give you the same thing, so that's really cool. But essentially, you know, for the 6S, normally you're able to essentially 3D touch and then swipe between your past two recent apps, and you could also pop into your app switcher, but this tweak is a much better take on that it essentially just allows you to scroll between you know all the applications that you have open like this and you basically just release your finger on the app you want to open and you're there just like that and you know something really cool about the latest update which is snake bite 2 is essentially as you can see you have these app previews when you go ahead and slide over an application you get a live preview of what the application is actually going to look like and what's going on inside that app in the past that wasn't there so that's a really cool touch to snake bite and if you open up settings of course you have some options to configure for snake bite as well so up the top you have the ability to enable or disable it of course and then you have show app labels this will essentially just you know as the name suggests it'll show you little labels in the view here so that's pretty cool you know if you want to be specific there and there's also the recent app section which is what it's set on right now and then there's also a favorites mode which essentially allows you to uh, customize which applications will show up when you 3D touch. So it will no longer be your recent apps. It'll be your favorites. And you, you can click into favorites down here and just toggle on which applications you want. I'm just going to go ahead and use the camera and the clock right now. So now as you can see here, when I 3D touch, it's just going to show me those applications and it lets me launch again those apps. So I personally would recommend sticking with recent apps because it's more useful, but that is there. There's also a number of apps shown. So if you want to bump it up a little bit or bump it down, as you can see, you can see numerous applications. This is definitely more useful in my opinion. So 
it's really up to you whether you want it to just be kind of busy with a lot of stuff or if you just want it to be, you know, very simplistic looking, very clean looking with just a few. Uh, down here you have the blur style, which is light and dark. So here's the dark one. It's, it's been on light the entire time. So there you go. I prefer light. It just looks a little bit better in my opinion. Plus you, you could kind of see the wallpaper and the blur a little bit better when it's on light. So really cool tweak, Snake Bite 2. Depth icons essentially brings the parallax effect from the wallpaper on your device to the icons on your home screen. So as you can see right here, when I tip my device around, you can see there the applications actually are shifting, you know, the icon is the icons themselves to the orientation of my device. So again, this is always there with parallax effect on iOS, but this actually takes it to the next level and ports it to the actual app icon. So that's incredibly cool, you know, especially if you like the parallax effect. Pretty much all these stock applications on iOS are customized to work with it, as well as Cydia, as you can see. The majority of the third-party applications do work with it, however, sometimes they have little graphical issues, for example, sometimes they're a little pixelated, and there's little graphical oddities here and there, but with the stock iOS applications, everything should work, you know, pretty much perfectly. The settings icon is one of my personal favorites, I just think it looks really cool and really realistic, so if you guys enjoy the parallax effect with the wallpaper, this is definitely something you should try, I mean, it just ports it to the next level. So if you guys open up settings, you can head over to depth icons and enable and disable it. There's also a little parallax test area and there's also light medium and strong settings i'm just going to keep it on strong so it's easy to detect in this video app delete allows you to essentially remove the x icon when you go ahead and enter wiggle mode from specific applications that you don't want it to show up for for example let's say you didn't want anybody deleting a certain app on your device maybe it's a very important application to you you could essentially do that with this tweak. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable the X on the YouTube icon for this demonstration. So we're just going to head over to settings here. Then you open up the app delete preferences and then just go into applications. And basically all you have to do is toggle on any app you don't want to be deleted. I'm just going to toggle on YouTube here. So now, as you can see, when I go ahead and enter my device into Wiggle mode, you know, all the other applications do have X's, but YouTube simply doesn't. So it's a really cool tweak to essentially avoid, you know, pesky people from deleting applications on your phone. Lock shot essentially makes your lock screen transparent. This is actually a really cool feature. So basically whatever's you know behind your lock screen, whether you're on your home screen or whether you're inside an application, as you can see there, it's actually going to show you right on your lock screen there. So you can get a preview of what is essentially coming when you unlock your device. So of course for me it's my home screen like this, but let's just say I open up an application, let's just jump into settings here and we'll lock the device. And again, it's just going to go ahead and blur in whatever is actually in the background and put it into the settings there. So you can see right there. Um, I don't know, maybe if you just forgot where you were and you just kind of wanted to have a reminder right before you unlocked your device, I could see this being, a th you know, something that's useful. And it's also just a really cool feature to have. So in the settings for it, you can enable or disable it. You can also disable the unlock zoom animations if you want to make things look more seamless so it just kind of stays there the whole time. And there's also the blur radius and some in-depth color, you know, tint settings as well. Then of course you could respring once you're done. So either way, super cool tweak. I've become pretty fond of Night Shift and I frequently use the toggle in the control center to enable and disable it. However, if you absolutely hate Night Shift, especially that toggle down there, you could go ahead and use Nuke CC Night Shift to basically just completely remove the toggle from down there. I'll show you guys what it's like when we go ahead and install it. So we're just gonna go ahead and find the tweak here and we're just gonna go ahead and download this and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys now when I open up the control center, boom, it's just exactly the way it was before Night Shift was introduced. But again, I personally, I'm not going to use this because I do enjoy using Night Shift. But guys, it pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys found some good tweaks to install. And it's really nice to see all these awesome tweaks coming out at a time like this when, you know, the iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak just came out and there's a lot of new jailbreakers to enjoy all these new tweaks. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for many more videos pertaining to jailbreak tweaks, iOS updates, that kind of thing. Also make sure to follow the channel on Twitter, like it on Facebook, and also make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll put all those links down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.